Season 1988-89, Barclays Division 4, 21st, Littlewoods Cup, 1st round, FA Cup, 3rd round. Villiers contemplated his return list while on holiday in Mallorca, then decided to release Paul Kendall, Adrian Shaw and Russell Black. Stuart Ferrabe, who had been a re- who had, had a wretched year with injuries, was given a monthly contract in an effort to prove himself, but he never played again and eventually had to retire. The town boss was not slow to bring new players to the club. There were experienced central defenders John Brammel, Rochdale and Alan Whitehead, York. Fullback David Logan, Northampton and midfielder Phil Horner, Leicester City. All these arrived on free transfers, but Air did dip into the club's front fund to bring Barnsley's Chris Hedworth to the Shea for £10,000. Hedworth was an obviously talented player, but unfortunate with injuries. And that was not the end of Air's recruitment drive. Following a pre-season friendly with Harrogate Town, so impressed was he with their young striker Andy Watson that he signed him as well. The new intake helped complement a squad that now included several youngsters making the transition from youth to first team. Paul Fleming and Dean Martin had already featured in the side over the last three seasons, but the likes of Wayne Allison, Lee Richardson, Phil Whitehead and Billy Bow would come to the fore during this campaign, and in the long run would help keep the club afloat. During the summer, Douglas Moody had joined the board as vice-chairman to Rod Thomas, with Jack Hammer being made a director of football. A working committee had been set up by Jim Brown of the club's new sponsors J&J Fee, whose primary aim had been to make money for Halifax Town and keep the club viable. The administrative heart of the football club now moved out of the old Crosslands and into the new premises near the town centre. The Shearmen, despite a number of players out through injury or suspension, made a flying start to the season with a 2-0 win at Torquay, then drew 1-1 at Scarborough in the Littlewoods Cup. On the eve of their first home game, Libert Henry was taken on loan from Watford. He played but could not prevent town going 2-1, down 2-1 to the enemy, Burnley. Town bowed out of the Littlewoods Cup without losing the game. Though Scarborough could consider themselves fortunate at the Shea to hold out, after extra time for a 2-2 draw to go through on the away goals rule. The Shea men put in plenty of effort, but not so much in their next game. They went down 4-1 at Exeter, but Air was angered to find that three players had broken club rules and had been drinking less than 48 hours before that match. Neil Matthews, Mick Matthews and David Logan were all suspended without pay and banned from any contact with the club for two weeks. Mick Matthews and Logan would leave shortly afterwards. Town played out a 3-3 draw with Carlisle, a game that with a full-strength team they would surely have won. Eyre was unrepentant, however. Under the same circumstances, he claimed, I would have done the same again. On the bright side, young striker Terry McPhillips netted his first senior hat-trick in that match. Though Town were not winning regularly, they were scoring goals, and in October they hit a purple patch. The Evening Courier tagged it, the great Halifax Town goal rush, as first Wrexham were beaten 4-1 at the Shea. Then, following defeat at Cambridge, Town scored 13 goals in three games to head the Football League scoring charts. After 12 games, they had scored 31 goals, with the prolific McPhillips level with Arsenal's Alan Smith at the top of the individual charts. In November, Chairman Rod Thomas stood down, Douglas Moody took over the club with Jack Hamer becoming chairman. This was not unexpected as they were now the sole members of the board. But on the pitch, Halifax Town kept scoring goals. In the FA Cup, a typically poached goal by McPhillips was enough to put them into the second round at the expense of York City. Town were drawn away at non-league Altrincham. They went into that game having failed to score in the fir- for the first time all season, suffering a 1-0 home defeat to Exeter seven days earlier. But in front of the BBC Match of the Day cameras, they did a professional job at Altrincham and won 3-0, and that without McPhillips, who was injured. In the third round for a second successive season, the Shearmen obviously hoped for another big-name club. Alas, they were paired with Altrincham's conference rivals, Kettering Town. This was not by any means an easy game, and certainly did not guarantee a passage to round four. But when Town drew at Rockingham Road, they must have thought that the hard work had been done. Not so. With 1st Division Charlton away in the winners, Town tossed away all their advantages in the replay, surrendering a 2-1 lead to go down 3-2, with Robbie Cook, not for the first time, proving a thorn in their side. The rot began to set in. Although the Shearmen put five past Scunthorpe at the beginning of January, that was to be the last of the good times. Only four more matches were won between then and the end of the season, and there was even talk, however hushed, of relegation to the conference. Town's last hope of salvaging their season was in the Sherpa Van Trophy. They had finished above Huddersfield and Scunthorpe to move into the knockout stages. 
Darlington were beaten 3-0 in the first round, but the Shea men blew it in front of an unusually high and optimistic crowd at the Shea against an efficient Blackpool side on the 21st of February, losing 2-0. Interest in the side began to wane as the team struggled. Matters were not helped when one of their young Richards, Lee Richardson, left for Watford in February for a new club record free of £175,000 plus. Town also lost the on-loan services of Chris Pullen, but took on his younger brother Nick, who had been turning out for Emley. Town also offered non-contract terms to forward Graham Broadbent, a local league player. Town saw the season out with 10 games without a win, but thankfully for them and their suffering supporters, relegation was avoided after Darlington claimed bottom place. Town's draw at Crewe in their penultimate match meant that mathematically they could not be caught. There had been more boardroom changes in February when Douglas Moody resigned, thus leaving Jack Hamer as its sole member. Jim Brown was elected chairman with Billy Air made managing director and Barry Dawson and Pam Burton co-opted onto the board. Pam Burton, a school teacher, thus become Halifax Town's first female director. A new board with some new ideas would perhaps engender better fortunes some chance. With money still tight, town would always be restricted, and it looked as if the club's fortune was already mapped out. The worst days were still ahead of them, and town would find survival their sole objective. Still, they could always sell a player or two to keep things ticking over.